Hi there! Today I'm going to share with you an idea that my language learners and I have been enjoying ever since we started school and that we have used as a easy but super effective routine both online and offline. I call that idea the I see, I think, I wonder spin-off because I have added a couple of structured components to it and now not only are my language learners discussing a given picture orally and writing down their thoughts using the three sentence starters I see, I think, I wonder, either in our online conversation chat or in their notebooks, but they are also stealing what I call some juicy language from an authentic text and participate in activities that help them own that language. Let me show you what I am talking about and also how you can use this routine, language routine, with different levels of proficiency in your students in different situations and use it tomorrow without extra preparation time. Before I jump in into explaining my activity, I wanted to let you know that you will have access to make a copy of this document, which is pretty much a collection of pictures that I have put together so far, as well as links to the resources I have used for this activity, the actual texts, also questions that I have written for this activity, as well as some comprehension and vocabulary worksheets. Basically everything you need to teach this activity for at least several lessons. And again, it will be absolutely free for you to use. I will be honored if you find this activity helpful. So step number one, a picture. So in the classical way of using I see, I think, I wonder, usually we already have content to teach and are looking for a picture to reinforce or to illustrate that content. In my way of using this strategy, we actually work a little bit backwards. I look for pictures, any pictures that catch my attention and that I know are going to pique my students' curiosity. And it happened to be that I had been collecting screenshots of pictures just like that on my phone to share with my own children to help them discover new interests and maybe to draw their attention to things that they haven't discovered yet. So most of those pictures come from either Facebook or just Google search and just something that catches my attention. So those pictures are usually part of some story or article. This is an important part of it. So those pictures are not just isolated pictures, let's say from Pixabay. Those are pictures that are actually there to specifically accompany the text. And this is how we use this activity in class. Once you have chosen your picture and the text that accompanies this picture, you are going to show it to your students. If you are working online, you can share the screen. If you are in the classroom, put it up on the big white screen. And then you ask them to verbalize, to say what they see, what they think, and what they wonder about this picture. Your beginner language learners are welcome to do it in their language. And the beauty is that after they share those sentences in their own language and then they listen to their classmates to express their thoughts in English, most of the time that expressing in their native language works as a scaffold to understanding what their classmates are sharing. So they said in their own language, I think it is, I see, I wonder, and then they hear other people say it several times in their class and they start figuring out things. So that kind of naturally scaffolds it for them, provides that accommodation to the activity. So for step number two, I always ask them to write the same things they said or they, it doesn't have to be identical to what they have just said, but I want them to write. Again, your newcomer beginner students can write in their native language. And as you can probably see here, I had my students type up their responses in our Teams meeting chat and I loved it because it was instant and those students who needed a little more support and another model, they could read the previous responses before making their own. And then for step number three, I ask my students, do you guys want to see what this picture really depicts? And even my students who seem like they're the most reluctant students to learn, not necessarily showing much interest, although I don't believe that children do not have natural curiosity, you just have to find the right key to that door and 
boom, it opens up. The flood of desire to learn and the background knowledge is there. Everybody has something to say. So I ask them, do you want to see what this picture is really about? And this is where I bring in the text that came with those pictures online. Um, and thus, they have this intrinsic motivation to read the text now. And when we are genuinely interested to learn something, we learn so much better. And that's exactly my goal. Then I show them the text, we read it together, and then I draw their attention to some, like I've mentioned, some juicy English or like one ELL teacher that I read a blog from, she calls it star phrases. So this text is part of the article that included this picture of the little boy. In this text, definitely after we had some comprehension and vocabulary work, I wanted to draw my students' attention to the metaphor, the magical box. We talked about why um, the author would call a television set to be the magical box. The, this definitely was an interesting discussion. But then I also wanted to draw their attention to the expression had blown his mind mind. Most of my students did not know what this expression was or they had heard and they intuitively could figure it out from context, but I know that none of them considered it to be a tool in their box, so to speak. So I asked them some questions that uh, involved that expression. For example, when was the last time you saw something that blew your mind? Gave them a sentence stamp. Last time I saw something that blew my mind. And then for sure, I gave them my example. Last time I saw something that blew my mind was in Michigan when we drove up to giant sand dunes. And then I asked them, to type up their responses in the chat or write in their notebook, and then we all read them together. I also saved all of their responses because the following day, we will, I like to refresh their memory, making sure that these expressions in the juicy English is going um, into their long-term memory. So this text, definitely, my students couldn't wait to read. I showed them this picture first and their responses were beautiful. Their guesses were so diverse when they were discussing it at first and writing down their responses. In the text, they there were no necessarily super juicy <laughs> expressions, but there were such words as commemorate and definitely the word depicts um, is a good academic word, it's super helpful, especially for access when they do have to describe pictures. Um, so I did ask them some questions to ponder upon the content of this text. And this is the next picture, and this is the text that came with it. A phrase that we decided to work with was influential. So he was one of the most influential figures in jazz. I kind of broke it down first to scaffold it a little more. So we worked with the verb to influence. So this was my question. What or who influences your food preferences? Here is the sentence frame. I shared with them that my Russian culture definitely influences my food preferences, even though I've lived in America for close to 20 years now. Then I also decided to make a little bit closer connections to each of them individually. I know I have some Fortnite fans, so I ask who is the most influential figure in Fortnite, who is the most, inf most influential figure in soccer, and also they had to explain why they or other people think so. I know this is probably a lot of details, but I wanted to make sure that you guys get a clear idea of how to utilize the strategy. I'm obviously super excited about this. I do want to add that as the final stage of using this strategy, make sure you recall these phrases and vocabulary in the days that follow and then intermittently sometime later to make sure that students do own um, these expressions and build upon them. Stay tuned for more videos. Thank you for watching and happy teaching.